Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the Game Day Breakfast Podcast. My name is Daryl. This is my co-host, Spencer. Tragedy struck this past weekend at a ceiling fan convention when the evening's entertainment, Dr. Linguini and his trampolining sheep, arrived on the scene. According to one eyewitness, everything was fine until one incredibly high bounce, and then the sheep hit the fan. And that's exactly what we can spe- expect to see this weekend in Tuscaloosa. Am I right, Spencer? <sighs> <laughs> Uh, I've been, we are finally at the time where we have to talk about this damn game and I am dreading it because I have not talked about it at all. And yeah, yeah you're going to have to actually begin to, um, this is going to, this is going to become real. It's just been an idea for the past month, yeah. two months, three months, year. Yeah. I, uh, interestingly, Alabama six and a half point favorites going into this game with a injured Tua, a Tua, a Tua that just had um, two screws put into his ankle. So interesting that they, uh, that Vegas is that keen on them. I know they're at home, but yeah, still. it's they're at home. It's in Brian Denny stadium in Tuscaloosa, obviously. Um, and I mean, Alabama is obviously the safe pick for Vegas betters right now. Um, yeah, you don't want to bet against Alabama. I mean, the fact that they are it's a single digit gives LSU a lot of hope. Yeah. But here's the thing, right? Reports have come out that they say Tua Tagovailoa is a game-time decision. Mm. And so you always go to that – you get that double standard in sports, right? So if Tua Tagovailoa plays and – if he plays – and LSU wins, I'm like, oh, if he plays and LSU wins, the narrative will be, oh, well, Alabama wasn't at 100%. Their quarterback was injured. But if Tua doesn't play and LSU wins, it would be like, oh, LSU sucks. They couldn't even beat Alabama's backup quarterback. And Alabama's backup quarterback, Mac Jones, is very good. He's a decent quarterback. Oh, yeah. yeah. Like, he's not on Tua Tagovailoa's level, but of course. he's – He's solid. So, it's going to come down to one of those narratives. But, like, if to, I want Tua to be at 100 Obviously, me being an LSU fan, I want Tua to be at 100%. Obviously, he's a great quarterback. He's, you know, he's a good person. So, I want him to be at 100% so we can get his best shot. So, if we do win, we know that we got his best effort. So it is, uh, that, that is awfully Goku of you to be like, no, I want you to be as good as you can possibly be. So, there's no doubt. Yeah, because if if, if it yeah, happens yeah. if it happens any other way, people will put an asterisk next to this game, and I don't want that. If LSU is obviously, I want LSU to win. If LSU is going to win this game, I want Tua to be at full strength. I want Alabama to be at full strength. I want I want their best shot. I want everything they've got, and then so we can say that we finally, after eight times of losing, eight times in a row of losing to them, we finally got over the hump. And beat them, but they were at their best. You know what I mean. So, and also, you don't want to see a good player like Tua get hurt. Obviously, yeah, hundred percent. And I, and I, I mean, Tua is is a heck of an athlete. Um, he's been. It's not his first time aggravating that ankle, if I understand correctly. I think it was his so, other um, ankle. I think he injured maybe, his. Own. Yeah, that might have been it. Maybe he just has weird ankles, but um, but yeah, I mean, I wish him nothing but the best. I mean, I, I heard that this is supposed to be stronger. It'll it'll reinforce it so that it'll be better in the future. But I think the problem right now is just because of how recent it was. A year from now, he'd be fine. Yeah. Um, they're saying this is supposed to be something he should he should heal up completely from. So. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, yeah, no, it's it's. I'm looking forward to it. It's going to be a fun game. We're going to get into a little bit. We're going to get into it a little bit more in detail later. Yeah. Um. Also, real quick, just have to get your thoughts. What did you think of that news article that I <laughs> that I opened the show with? Yeah, that's uh, that's pretty funny. No, I, I got that from Whose Lines, anyways. I was watching some some stuff today, and I saw that, and I thought I have to start the show with that. That I wish I would have watched that show when I was younger, dude. They're so they that show had so many pieces of comedy gold uh. on it. I used to be in tears laughing at that show. 
I wish I the my one of my favorite jokes of all time came to that came from that show. Oh, the yeah, the about the, the porcelain figures. Yeah, dude, it's so good. It's the best. Yeah. Uh-huh. Uh, oh, I love it. I love it. I do too. Uh huh. Um, so, but yeah. You, uh, what's up? You want to take a look at the games from last week? See how we did? Yeah. Uh, let's do that. Let's I open know, up with the heartbreaker. I know we were wrong about one of them. Open. Uh, well, actually, we were, so yes, we were both wrong about um, USC and Oregon. Um, we both obviously were rooting for Oregon, but uh, USC. Uh, but we we picked USC just because history serves that USC does well in this game. Uh, in the first quarter, it really looked like that. Um, USC got out to a pretty quick lead, uh, and then uh, kept stayed on the gas until a certain point. And then I think special teams. I, I didn't get to catch some of the game, but I think special teams was the problem. I think that Oregon ran one back. I think there was like a there was like a blocked kick. Um, maybe I'm making that up, but I do remember that there were some special teams issues early in the game. Yeah, it. And, and obviously, you know, USC, is, they're having a bit of a down year. Like, they've still won a few games, but they're on, like, their third-string quarterback and all mm-hmm. this other type of stuff. But, like... Oh, yeah. History, Here's what I was talking. Go ahead. Sorry. History tells you that, you know, there'll be a highly ranked Pac-12 team, whether it be Utah, whether it be Oregon, and then they'll play against USC, and the USC's having a down year, and then all of a sudden they'll get it together against the highly ranked team and, like, interrupt their season. So right, yeah, and uh, and USC actually in this game was was playing like I said they got out to a very a very quick lead ten zip in the first quarter second quarter Oregon comes back they take the lead fourteen uh, ten they go up again twenty one ten it's starting to slip away but then there's a, a really pretty pass um, from Michael Pittman uh, and then USC comes back is twenty one seventeen about to go into the half with twenty seconds left mind you um, no pardon me eight eight seconds left mind you and um, Again, special teams. Uh, the Michael Wright, the guy that was taking the ball for Oregon, ran it back 100 yards uh, for a touchdown. So what could have been a four-point game at the half turned into an 11-point game at the half, and from there it was just all Oregon. Yeah. Um, it's just demoralizing to, to go into the locker room like that. You know, I mean, you think, okay, we're back in this. You know, you sort of come up with a game plan, but then they just sort of immediately take the gas out. So, um, yeah, I mean, good job for Oregon uh, for – for punching it out there, you know, and keeping their playoff hopes alive. Yeah, absolutely. Which they definitely have. Yeah. So, um, if if everything goes according to plan, it's looking like it's going to be uh, Oregon and Utah in the Pac-12 championship. Um, so, uh, I mean, we can obviously talk about that when we get to championship weekend, but um, that'll be a fun one. That will be a fun one. Um, Utah Washington, we were pretty split on that one. You took uh, Washington, I took Utah. I, I as me as soon as I picked Utah later on, I was really regretting my decision. Um, I thought Washington was going to pull it out, but obviously I had to stick with it. Um, but Utah ended up pulling it out. It was a it was a pretty pretty solid game down the middle, five point game. Um, yeah. Did you catch any of that game? Uh, I don't think so. I don't think I watched any of that one. Um, I think I may uh, have turned it on for like two seconds just to check the mm-hmm. score and watch a play or two, but I don't remember what happened. Um, but yeah, I just, I went with the Huskies cause they were at home. It, you know, Seattle is known, obviously they have the Seahawks up there. Uh, and obviously they're known for being loud. So I figured the Huskies at home, you take them, but the Utes ended up pulling it out. So. Right. Good right. On them. Did you think of Florida, Georgia? Uh, it, mm, we, I was wrong cause I thought Florida was going to win. <laughs> right. Um, uh, I watched part of it. I mean, close game, SEC. I mean, it was an SEC game. Um, it obviously went uh, the opposite direction of the way I thought it would, but yeah. that's fine. Jake, Jake, yeah, Drake Fromm did what he needed to do against a very tough Florida defense, uh, and the Georgia defense was just dominant. I mean, not in, Georgia was held to three points going into the fourth quarter, um, and obviously during – you know, sort of the cleanup time, Florida was able to, to scratch some points in the fourth quarter and make it closer than it looked um, or than it really was. But, uh, yeah, I know Georgia definitely going to keep rolling. Um, it's Their destiny is sort of in their hands as far as just winning the East. So we'll see yeah. what happens there. I mean, this was the de facto SEC East championship. Yeah, pretty um, much. So unless some wild stuff happens, this – I mean, Georgia's going to win the East. Um, mm-hmm. So – yeah, it's just one of those things where they have some losable games left, you know. Yeah, um, but, um, kept their playoff playoff hopes alive. 
Um, although they've already slipped up once this season, so. Right, right. Um, I need to go find out the bottom of the barrel game, Presbyterian at Hampton. Like, let's see. Yeah, we need to. Obviously, neither one of us watched this game. Oh, I'm. I'm <laughs> you're finding out live as it happens, everybody. What? Uh, who? Who won this game? Uh, I'm gonna have to look it up because ESPN is not gonna filter it very easily for me. Uh, I'm also going to look it up. Uh, I'm getting a bunch of churches. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, what, what 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 was their their mascot last week? We talked about the hoses. They're like the blue hose or something. Blue like that. hose. Yeah. Um, and I don't know if that's like if that's like a water hose or like pantyhose. Uh, and that's why I picked against them because Hampton's mascot is the Pirates. Um, so I'm really curious to know who won now. I, I'm like uh, on the edge of my seat to find out. I'm going to look it up. They played in a big South Conference, right? I believe so. I believe so. I'm on it. I'm on the case. Solving Scooby-Doo Mysteries. Really? <laughs> of the Scooby-Doo Mystery of who won this game. Uh, Hampton won forty to seventeen. Well, that chalked that one up for you. Yeah, and I simply oh, went with them because one, they were at home. Two, Presbyterian hadn't won a game, and three, uh, Presbyterian's mascot is 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 not um, mm. anything you should be cheering for. So let's see. I'm counting up the okay. So Hampton won that, and then I was wrong about that one, and I was wrong. Yeah. Um, so I was four and two this week. I was four and two picking this week, and you were two and four. I was two and four. Two and four picking this week. You were sucking it up. That's fine. Did you catch the uh, SMU t- uh, Memphis game? Yes, I watched a lot of that game. That was a really fun. Yeah, that game. was that was wild. Um, a lot of beautiful passes in this game. I'm continually impressed with uh, Shane Bouchelle, just his ball placement and his touch. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, Memphis came out on top. I think it's similarly uh, special teams. There was a lot of uh, that was a that was a kick a, return a of, for a touchdown. Um, mm-hmm. A there lot was of a lot punch of, that got broken loose for you know for a lot of yards. Yeah, there was a there was a big uh, there were a lot of big plays in this game. Yes, um, a lot so, of lead changes, which was yeah. cool. And it was fun. Obviously, game day was in Memphis for this game, and it was cool mm-hmm. to see. Cause they were like in the middle of a street, right? On like a street, uh, like a street. Corner. They were on Beale Street. Yeah. Um. So it was cool to see. And Pat McAfee and showed it, up again, and I hope he becomes a permanent fixture on game day. He actually commentated for Friday Night SmackDown last week. Yeah, I, I was listening to his um his interview. He was talking on his show about the whole situation with that, and so I don't know if you know what happened, but. A lot of WWE's talent and announcers, mm-hmm. something went wrong with their planes, and they got stuck in Saudi Arabia. And yeah, there's a whole um, there's a whole controversy about that, actually. Yeah, and so they got stuck. And Pat, uh, he had just got home from doing. Um, I think he was doing. He was at the West Virginia Baylor game in Waco, right? Mm, right. Um, so he gets back to Indianapolis. And he gets a text from Triple H. He says, are you at home? And he texts him back and he says, yes. And then Triple H calls him and he goes, uh, I don't know for sure yet, but we may need you to come and out to do commentary for Friday Night SmackDown in Buffalo. And he was like, yeah. all right. And so he, he's calling all these places. He goes, I need to get to Buffalo for Friday Night SmackDown, and then I need to leave there and I need to get to Memphis for college game day. Mm-hmm. And so he's calling all around and then he eventually he can't get a plane and eventually he gets the uh, the owner of the Indianapolis Colts who he used to play for let him borrow his plane to get to Buffalo and then after that took a nap on the plane to go to college game day in Memphis Ooh, so it was you know, he was tired yeah but like I like Pat McAfee I like his grind I like what he's doing um, mm. I liked him as a Forget. football player but I like him even more now that he's kind of like a, a uh. media personality very cool how would, how would you like to get a text from triple h just like hey <laughs> yeah need you to come work real quick yeah or like hey you home <laughs> yeah <Yes>. you up <laughs> yeah um that's funny yeah oh, yeah no doubt about it but yeah so um interesting week for pat mcafee he had a, he had a full plate but game day was awesome um it was nice to see them in memphis have you ever been to memphis i have not been to memphis 
Great barbecue, man. Uh, it really shocked me. Whenever before I went, I was like, Texas has the best barbecue. And then I got to Memphis and I was like, mm, maybe it's not that simple. Yeah. Well, <laughs> maybe I mean, best in really the word I'd be using here. I mean, Memphis is one of the barbecue capitals, right? Obviously, oh, man. you know, you got Texas barbecue and then you got, uh, you know, where brisket is king. And then you go to like the Carolinas, like North Carolina, South Carolina. They're they're all about pork, right? And then right. you go to 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 Memphis, and you go to uh, Birmingham, Alabama has a big um, barbecue scene, uh, but they have like mm-hmm. a white sauce. Uh, it's like white barbecue sauce. Yeah, we've talked about that. Yeah, I, I wonder how they do that. It's uh, it's made with uh, mayonnaise. Um, oh, that makes sense. Yeah. But it tastes yeah, like. It. But it tastes like barbecue sauce. Like it looks like ranch, but it just tastes like barbecue sauce. But it's white yeah. because it's made with mayonnaise. So like that's I their see, whole I thing. See. And obviously there's a bunch of barbecue regions. Um, but yeah, yeah, I've always heard. And Kansas City also has good barbecue. I've heard. Um, yeah, I um, I, whenever my dad and I went to Memphis whenever I was a bit younger, and we went to a place. And I forget the name of this place, but we talk about it all the time. But you, you, when you walk into the restaurant, it's sort of like when you walk into the door, you immediately just go downstairs, and it's kind of like in a basement. Mm-hmm. Um, and I mean, I ordered like the basic. I think it was like six bucks. It was super cheap. I ordered like the basic brisket sandwich, and they just brought me out. I mean, it looked like a Scooby Doo sandwich, dude. It had like it had the buns, and then it had probably about like like a, a grown man's hand high of just just stacked brisket on there. I mean, it wasn't even a sandwich. You couldn't even there, there was no feasible way to get your mouth around it. But boy, it was amazing. That sounds delicious. I mean, so what we'll the next time we're just taking road trips, <laughs> we yeah. need to go into Memphis and get some barbecue for sure. But yeah. Let's get to our lovely topic of the week, which uh, we're both incredibly stoked about, selfishly. I'm so, not- I mean, we're we're excited about it for like selfish reasons, but we're also excited about it because this makes sense and it's like about damn time. You know what I mean? Mm, right. So, absolutely. So yeah, recently the the NCAA, who is the governing body over college athletics, decided that um, student athletes can can profit off of their likeness which means if they want to uh, sign autographs and get paid for that they can do that if they want to sign a jersey they can get they can make money from that uh, mm-hmm. this however and I think a lot of people have gotten this confused um, this is not the university paying the athletes that's not what this is the athletes are just going to be able to profit off of their likeness which means they can they can sell they can have a youtube channel like donald delahaye did when he had to give up his his scholarship when he was at ucf um although that's a whole thing i think he made the wrong decision but anyway um and i mean there's been several people where like they made that was a guy back in the day he made like beanies and he sold them and the NCAA mm. told him he had to stop selling those or like there's a whole myriad of cases where things like that happen right. but now it, it, it's just that they're only student athletes that this rule applies to because you can be a student at a university and still have all these rights it's just that if you're quote unquote an amateur athlete then you can't use it so which is the weirdest thing in the world to me like right just because I'm a like if you think about it if you had the money the time and the want the want ability and this is kind of a different topic but it 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 ties into this if you were just a regular student you had the money the time and your credits would transfer for let's say you go to a four year you complete a four year degree so that's eight semesters of college if you absolutely wanted to you could go to a different university for all eight semesters of your college and you would not get penalized for it other than the like the tuition and whatever it is you'd have to pay but because you're a student athlete you have to jump through all these hurdles to, to like if you want to transfer or do all this other type of stuff, and it makes zero sense to me. Um, so, and uh. I do think the NCAA is doing one; they're doing right by the athletes because this has been a long time coming. This should have happened years and years ago. Um, but we've seen all these states like California and South Carolina and Florida. And all these states introduced these bills that allow players to profit off their likeness. And now the NCAA is saying, no, they can do that. So they're kind of jumping out so they can get out ahead of this thing so they can make their rules the way they want them to, which mm-hmm. is like, eh, yeah. but... Yeah, well, and, they, is, and they're expecting... They're, they're giving themselves a, just over a year to do it. They're expecting to have something finalized by January of, uh, of 2021. Um, so... 
I think they're going to run into a lot of problems. And obviously, name image likeness is should be a right that all student athletes have, at least in my opinion. However, it's just the legality is going to be very, um, very tangled. Um, going to need to iron this out. So, um, yeah. but yeah, that's to me that's going to be the most complicated thing. But the most exciting thing, at least for us, selfishly, is that this opens the door for uh, a new NCAA football game, uh, like for for like video game. Um, yes. and we couldn't be more excited because we've been big fans of the series ever since it you know went defunct in fourteen. Yeah, I mean. I mean, even before that, like I've, I've, I'm mainly. Um, yeah, well, I mean, played, I mean, like that's we've been fans since forever, but yeah, but that's when it all sort of you know fell yeah. apart. Obviously, NCAA 14 was the last one they made back in the summer of 2013. Um, and you know, I've always been a fan of this series. I played a bunch of sports games growing up, you know. So like, I'm not what you would call a traditional gamer. Like you know, a lot of the people they play like. Zelda and all these other type of like very story driven games and I just never had the interest in those games because I always wanted to play sports games and I played a lot of WWE games um, and stuff like that Uh, and there were there were like weird random obscure games that I would play but I've all this has always been my favorite game series is NCAA I still play NCAA 14 to this day it's like the only game I play because I still have an Xbox 360 Um, and so but yeah like selfishly this is good for NCAA football fans because this opens the door for there potentially being a new game coming out. Um, let's make it, let's make a hypothetical here because the engine for these type of games, the Madden and uh, the NCAA games um, from a gaming perspective is more or less built. There are things yeah. that are changed on it, but I mean, sort of the same game gets re-released each year. So the, the engine is out there. This is, if they were, if they were to, if they were to decide to decide tomorrow, Hey, let's make an NCAA game. Um, it would probably take less than two years to sort of throw together. Yes. Um, probably just a little bit more if they wanted to just obviously iron it out and make it good. But assuming they just decided tomorrow, okay, well, this rule is going to be made. Um, and then by fall of 2021, they were going to have a brand new NCAA football game. It would be NCAA 21, I guess. Um, well, if it came out in the fall of 2021, it would be, be, it would be 22. 22, yeah. Right, right. But what is one thing you'd want out of it? What's one thing that you maybe haven't seen before, something you want back, something along those lines? Well, can I give you something I don't want first? Me. What me. I don't want is them to rush a game. I want them to take their time, and I want it to be like it was in the old days. I want it to be completely separate from Madden. I want a completely different development team for NCAA. I want people who actually want to be making this game. I don't want the same regurgitated crap that Madden has been putting in. I don't play Madden, but from what a lot of people talk about, Madden has been the same for over and over again. And I I do watch a few Madden YouTubers. And that's that's because of that's because of EA. Yeah. So but now if there's an NCAA game, they'd be to me they'd be forced to make both games better, even though it's coming out from the same company. Because if you make one if you make NCAA really, really good and Madden still the same crap over and over again, people are just gonna play Mm -hmm. NCAA. So it's interesting. It's interesting before just to to touch on that as far as making a quality competitive game. Um, before the whole con, I don't know how much you know about this whole controversy with Blizzard. Blizzard is the the developers of Overwatch and Hearthstone and a couple other big, big competitive games. Mm -hmm. I would have thought Blizzard would have been the perfect developer for NCAA. Um, the games moving forward just because they understand how to build a competitively active game and a competitively active uh community mm-hmm. um until recently when they sort of had this whole controversy they i don't know how, do you, do you, are you familiar with this Spencer? i am but i kind of okay. avoided it because i didn't really know okay. what was going on yeah long story short for for those of you that don't know um essentially there's a hearthstone player hearthstone is basically sort of computer magic the gathering with a little bit of a variant on it. anyways a very big game um very big in the esports scene and there was a a player named uh, blitz chung who decided to come out and speak about he, he used his time on one of blizzard's events to speak out about what's going on in hong kong right now which obviously is a whole debacle but he you know he used his freedom of speech to say hey this is my opinion on it and that was it um blizzard uh, essentially revoked his uh his award and took a ton of and uh revoked his his license to play um i don't know what the time frame on it is and then they came out and gave like a really crappy apology like last week so it's a whole mess all that to mm-hmm. say before that happened i thought blizzard would have been the perfect developer for this because they they're such a they're so good at building a competitive gaming community yeah and I, building a competitive game i just wanted to be ea because EA has would have track- been. Yeah, regardless of what you think about EA, I've always liked EA. Um, 
Like, obviously, they've made some mistakes in the past, but obviously EA has a track record of they know how to make a sports game, they know how to make a good sports game. Um, so it would be the path of least resistance to stick yeah. with EA, and and they have shown signs of trying to like they have a new Star Wars game coming out that they're 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 putting a lot of stock into. Um, but the big thing for them is just the the whole pay to win. Like people are tired of of paying for a game and then spending more money on the game once it's yeah. been bought. You know, I do not want that in NCAA. Of course, like of Ultimate course. Team was fun in NCAA fourteen, although I never really played it online. And like Ultimate Team could come back, but I don't want it to be like pay to win um of course pay so. to win cosmetics is one thing right like if you want to pay 99 cents for a, a, a pack of uh of uniforms that's fine like it, that's fine and and i would prefer it not be random so you don't have to sit there and like you do scratch off cards to get the uniform you want but yeah i mean i don't mind paying for dlc that's normal but um yeah um that's one thing yeah. you don't want to see like you said yeah that's one thing i don't want to see. so there's a bunch of stuff I, i'm gonna just go i'm gonna rattle off a list it's here right. man all right so from the new one, I want uh, I want FCS teams for one, um, because they should be in the game. You know, because people want to be able to use your North Dakota states, your South Dakota states, uh, Take your App Sam State Houston, every time. App, well, App State's FBS now. Um, oh yeah, you're right. You're right. My bad. So, th- but you want to be able to use these like big powerhouses. Um, uh. I want uh, bring back Road to Glory because Road to Glory is amazing, but. Uh, expand it a little bit and make me play because in NCAA 14 when you started Road to Glory you started in your senior year of high school um, make me start in my freshman year of high school make me like earn the starting job and then go through the whole thing and then go to college and then whatever the coincide Madden is let me export my player to Madden with the whatever. full experience yeah give me that and then well, can I get the DLC where my dad throws the ball with me in the yard <laughs> Yeah. Like, can um, I get that? And then can I get Pop Warner? <laughs> and then after that, can I go through middle school? Yeah, that'd be that'd be really immersive. But uh, it's, I want to see my mom give birth to me, and then then my dad put a football in my hand. <laughs> yeah. But uh, but yeah. So uh, and another thing I would like is obviously bring back Team Builder, which is where you can make custom teams and like. If for some reason there's a team not in the game, you can bring them into the game like you could in 14. But here's what I want. You can leave Team Builder almost exactly the same as you want, except give me more color options. Um, and when you make a team, give me more. Give me a choice between more than two helmets and more than two pair of pants. Like, increase that to like five, maybe. Um, I don't know what the optimal number, but in 14, you can only have two helmets and two pairs of pants, which is ridiculous to me. But when I go to pick... When I go to make my uniforms, give me the option to pick which brand the uniforms are so I don't have to try to upload those logos myself. Like, if I want them to be Nike, give me a, like you're a gonna Nike. Run into, you're going to run into some major legality issues there, my man. I wish you could do that. Yeah, well, like, well, Nike, Nike Under Armour, and Adidas are already in the game. Like, they have the licensing to have the gloves and the shoes and the uniforms already in the right. game. But can you mix and match between teams? Because I didn't think you were able to do that since the team signs with a particular brand. You know, no, no. What I'm saying is, like, if I make a custom team, oh, like a, okay, a team that you. doesn't You're exist, right. let me choose which brand my uniforms are. So, like, if I want Nike uniforms, I click and I get the the default Nike like um, like shell for my uniforms, and then the Nike swooshes change according to what my colors are. If I want Under Armour uniforms, the little Under Armour UAs change, or if I want Adidas, or if I want Russell Athletic, or whatever other brand, or if I want Jordan brand, you know, Jordan's a, a player in the college football uniform sphere now. Give me that. Give me, and this is another thing I want, give me the ability to create custom conferences. You can already do that in NCAA 14, but you just have to, it's like moving one team from a conference to another. Give me a switch when I go into a dynasty, if I want to start a brand new dynasty, give me a switch to make every team an independent and build the conferences like I want them. Let me have conference, custom conference names. Let me name the conferences what I want. Let me put whatever team from whatever conference I want and let me have as many teams I want in each conference. So you could like, if you wanted to start from the very beginning of like do a dynasty where you start from the very beginning of conference realignment from all the way back and you just play, that would give you like a very long series to do, you know, like if you wanted to put it on YouTube or whatever, but just let me, so I could bring back like the old big East or the old like big eight or the old Southwest conference. Let me name these and give me like the old classic logos that I could get with them too. Um, I think that would be really fun. Um, 
I'm sorry I'm rambling about this, but I'm very <laughs> No, you have I'm, some opinions. I'm very this passionate has been about up over years. Yeah, I'm very it's been six years, Daryl. I'm very passionate about NCAA. Also give me a Heisman challenge. Heisman challenge was in the previous and we had a bunch of old Heisman winners. But now give me a Heisman challenge where I can get to use Johnny Manziel and Jameis Winston and Marcus Mariota and Derek Henry and I need I need Lamar. Johnny Manziel versus Baker Mayfield. Baker Mayfield, Lamar Jackson, Kyler Murray. Give me Heisman challenges with all of them. And Man, give, just, me, give, give me Johnny Manziel versus Baker Mayfield and SmackDown versus Raw. I, I need that. <laughs> Forget. I don't need the rest of the players. I just need them. Yeah, that kind, of seg- that kind of segues into what I want, man. Is I want. Um, I don't know if you remember the NFL Street uh, games, but they had the one-on-one mode. My favorite game series, dude. I love them. Yeah, yeah. Besides I mean, NCAA, I love it so much. The uh, you know the one-on-one, the one-on-one mode where it's like one guy has the ball, one guy has to tackle, and it's yeah, just and like you, you and her. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I want that. Like that. Like, like little, those little training modes are fun. And again, I, I've played so many NCAA, so many NFL streets, and they, they're all kind of blended together in my childhood because I haven't played them in recent years. But one of the things I remember most, and I think this may have been a Madden thing, was that there was drills you could run. So it would be like, okay, go, and then it would be like, hit your Y, hit your X, and it was just I liked yeah. the drills and I liked those one on ones. And I tell you, the biggest thing, if nothing else, if if the game is horrible and it doesn't work. And the next NCAA is terrible. At least give me the tug of war punt return. Oh game. my god! You remember when we you used to play that? that? Oh, dude, give me give me all those mini games back. Give me the tug of war. Keep the mascot thing in there. Give me the option dash challenge where you had to just run option plays the whole time. Yeah, let um, me tell you something. I would watch a real football game where the, all that happened was punt returns and whoever oh. scored, wh- whoever had two touchdowns first wins. I would watch that. Or like, like whoever with, had the most points, like yeah. Oh my god, dude, yeah, I'd watch that too. That'd be great. Yeah, so, so I want some of those fun modes back because, again, like you know, with with a game like NCAA or like any really fighting game, anything that is very anything that is multiplayer and sort of one dimensional like that, where there's only one thing you can do, um, mm-hmm. not like a not like a, a, a Zelda or you know a Grand Theft Auto. There's a million things to do in this wide world. When you have one thing you can do. What you need to do to make your game great, I think, is to add all those fun mini games that make you sort of recontextualize what you're doing. Like instead of you just playing a full football game, you maybe have the punt return mode. You have the things that make you do the things you wouldn't ordinarily do in the game. You like how many juice can you get? Like things like that really push yeah. games like that to the next level. Dude, that one, a one v one mode in like an actual football game would be really fun. Like similar oh, to yeah. NFL Street Two. Absolutely. That, that was when that started. Was NFL Street Two? That's if you, that's probably my. It's probably a tie with NCAA 14 for my favorite video game of all time. I love, dude. I mm-hmm. adore that game, dude. I played that game so much when I was a kid. Um, so, but yeah, give me one v one like Oklahoma drill almost. Like in NCAA mm-hmm. 14, you can do the little practice drills, but it's like the little Oklahoma drill. But give me that where it's just heads up and you got to try to tackle me and I got to try to tackle you. And you could do it two two v two as well. Any like a really trashy like a game break thing that you can do like when your meter's full like you can you can go off on one play and you yeah. can obviously make things like that to where you could turn it on and off for competitive play but how much yeah. fun would it be to like or like to, to be using like Kyler Murray and then go into like game break mode and just juke every player <laughs> you know yeah. what I mean just some yeah. some nonsense make that a whole game mode like separate yeah. from the rest of the game and you could just like. Give me, like, Ultimate Team, but it would be, like, what they have in Madden right now, like, the game modes in Ultimate Team. I don't know how many Madden YouTubers you watch, but I watch MMG a lot, and he, there's a lot of crazy game modes they're putting in Madden right now. So. As an aside, whenever, because uh, you and I are going to see each other in a couple of days, as an aside, we've got to play, like, we, yeah, we've oh, got I'm, to play 14 or something, I'm ready. Like, now I'm bringing talking my, about this, I'm, I'm bringing my Xbox. Up. I'm bringing, okay. I'm going to bring 10 and 14, because 10 had okay. the minigames. 10 okay we're gonna play some 10 then because i wasn't very good at 14 but 10 all right enough of so, that yeah um, we're very pumped as you can see folks uh this video but, this this episode is going to be long but i don't care because i get to hey, talk about my favorite video yeah, game exactly. so well, let's get into some pickums my man yeah uh let's uh yeah tell me about uh number five penn state at number 13 minnesota uh who uh Unfortunately, but also fortunately, game day will not be at this week. Uh, so, real quick, you have an opinion about them not not going to LSU for some reason, or not going to Tuscaloosa for some reason? Um, Wanted them to, to stay away from this game? Yes, from the because... LSU game? I mean, because obviously, like, the day we're recording this on Monday, 
So tomorrow, after we're recording this, the playoff rankings are going to come out. The official playoff rankings. So right now, LSU versus Alabama is one versus two, like it was game of the century game in 2011. That could change uh, tomorrow when they announce the playoff when they announce the playoff rankings. But the past few times it's been LSU and Alabama, and they've both been highly ranked. Game day has been in town, whether we've been in Tuscaloosa or in Baton Rouge. Game day has been in town. There's been a lot of tension on the game, and you know. Um, there's already a lot of tension. Game yeah. day is not doing anything. Yeah, I mean, there's already going to be a lot of attention on this game, but LSU and Alabama are two of the blue blood uh, programs in the country, right? They're going to get future chances to have game day come to town. This is the first time Minnesota's been 8-0 and since, like, the 40s, and the last time they went 8-0 and was... The last time they went 8-0, and they won the national championship. I think it was in 1941. And obviously, they went to Brookings, South Dakota for North Dakota State at South Dakota State. And then this past week, they were in Memphis for SMU at Memphis. They're going to these different schools. And I think they should, to me, they should go to a different place every week, regardless of how big the rankings are. But obviously, for TV ratings and all that type of stuff and money involved, they're going to go to these big schools. But I just thought it would be interesting if three weeks in a row they went to a school. Because Minnesota's never hosted game day. If they went to three in a row, they went to a school that's never hosted game day. Um, just to like with this LSU Alabama game, just like flip the mojo a little bit because usually LSU Alabama is at night, right? This week it's this, this year it's at two 30, it's a two 30 kickoff. So it's, it's going to be probably the biggest game of the day, but it's not going to be the last game of the day. Um, the bit, the next biggest game that day is obviously this Penn state and Minnesota game. And I just wanted to like LSU hasn't beaten Alabama in the last eight times we've played. I just want to flip the mojo a little bit. And and, oh, and maybe I, 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 I see what you're saying, but I will say this is the first year in recent years that LSU has felt like they can beat Alabama because in previous years, it's felt like they've had a chance this year. It feels like they really can do it. This feels like a 50 50 game as opposed to a, like they have the best chance of anybody. You know what I mean? I am cautiously optimistic about our chances because I've gotten my hopes up before and we've lost. So, oh. but all that Say our opinions on that. Yeah, we yeah. need to talk about Penn State and Minnesota. Um, uh, I, for one, number one, every, every time I see Minnesota, uh, every time I see their logo, I think about the video where they their hockey team has a commercial about auto insurance or something. And yeah. have you seen this video? Where they're, like they're, they're like there's a polar bear that's a mascot and he keeps slipping on the ice. I think so. <laughs> and it's like the funniest thing. I'm gonna post it in the link. Basically, every time. Basically, what happens is this: this polar bear's just walking, and there's a guy sitting next to him. And he's talking about insurance, and he's like, he just keeps saying his lines, right? But the polar bear keeps like fit, tripping and almost falling. Mm-hmm. So he's like, needless to say, I didn't get my insurance back. And then the polar bear's like, fub it up, fub it up, fub it up, just like almost <laughs> falls over. So um, that's what I think of every time I see the Minnesota St- uh, Minnesota State Golden Gophers logo. Mm-hmm. Um, but I'm taking Minnesota State. I think their defense is for real. In their last in their last five games, most of the uh, points they've allowed is to a uh, an Illinois team, 17 points. An Illinois team has been very good all year. Mm-hmm. Um, been very opportunistic. Uh, they're allowing a lot. They're, they're allowing 166 games, 166 yards per game, as opposed to Penn State's 211 right now. Uh, I think their defense is for real. So I am yeah. taking the Golden Gophers in this one. Uh, yeah, Golden Gophers is a great mascot name. Um, <laughs> it, it's it's really good. Nittany Lions is also a really good mascot name. Um, yeah, I think. Minnesota has certainly improved uh, over the course of this season because you look at their first game and they beat South Dakota State by a touchdown. And then their Mm -hmm. next game they beat Fresno State by a field goal. And then they beat Georgia Southern by a field goal. And they beat Purdue by only a touchdown. Um, And then they – and then these last few games they beat – they beat Illinois 40 to 17. They beat Nebraska 34 to 7. Rutgers 42 to 7. Maryland – like a team that's only getting better. Yeah, they're they're going into midseason form. Um, they're they're improving. Um, I'm a big believer in Minnesota. I like what PJ Fleck has done there. Obviously, he's a great coach. But I'm gonna go with Penn State in this one. Uh, I just Minnesota's a good team, but I think Penn State's better. Um, Penn State's just been knocking the chocolate out of people this year. Um, their toughest game so far has been against um, has been against Pitt and against Iowa. Um, but the rest of their games have not been close. Like. 
I mean, Idaho, they're an FCS. They've been 79 to 7 over Idaho, 45 to 13 over Buffalo, uh, 59 to nothing over Maryland, 35 to 7 over Purdue. And then mm. um, they beat Michigan. Uh, they beat Michigan by a touchdown, and they beat Michigan State by three touchdowns. Um, uh, there, there is going to be something going for Minnesota because this is a home game for them, and it's an 11 a.m. kickoff. Um, mm, we know how that goes. Yeah, so like 11 a.m. kickoffs in the Big Ten are always weird. They're always crazy games. Uh, but I'm going to go with Penn State. But I think I'm going to go with Penn State to win. But I think it's going to be close. I think it's going to the final score is going to be decided by less than a touchdown. Really enough, um, Vegas has Penn State also six and a half point favorites in this game, just like they have Alabama six and a half point favorites in the other game. For what it's worth, take that so, line if you bet on sports. This one, yeah, right. This is going to be a fun game. Uh, this is my cat. This is my recliner game out the gate. But uh, yeah. yeah, this this should be a fun one. Uh, but yeah. Go Minnesota. Let's see what the Golden Gophers can do. Yeah, I, uh, I, I want. If I'm looking at this game as a fan, I want Minnesota to win. I have nothing against Penn State, but like Minnesota is obviously like one of the Cinderella stories of this year. So as a fan, I want Minnesota to win, but I think Penn State's going to win because mm. KJ Hamler is insane. That dude is wild. He's really, really good. So, yeah. yeah. Well, uh, Vanderbilt. Uh, harnessed the uh, the golden anchor and slayed Mizzou a couple weeks back, and then of course they uh, lost to South Carolina pretty quickly after that. Are they going to do anything special this weekend when they go into the swamp? No, because they're in the swamp. Florida's defense is really good. Yeah, I kind of agree. Um, the only way I see this going bad uh, the, the, for Florida is if they just cannot recover after their loss to Georgia, because it's obviously a very big loss. Um, they were sort of hoping to keep their Keep their play. I mean, I don't want to say playoff. Hope. They could keep their playoff hopes alive. I think if they beat that Georgia team last week, LSU being their only loss and being a close loss, they were still mm-hmm. very much in the picture. So um, after that Georgia game, it just it, we're going to see what kind of team they are because mm-hmm. a lot of teams will lose the game that is sort of their hope. You know, this is our hopes and dreams. We have to win this to keep going. You lose that, you lose kind of a lot of your fighting spirit. And of course, Vanderbilt, as we know, um, has nothing to lose. Yeah. So. If you were, see, we'll, we'll see which bandy shows up. If this was Mizzou versus Florida, we'd have something to talk about. But because it's Vanderbilt, I'm a and because it's Vanderbilt and they're in the swamp. I'm going with Florida. Yeah, I will too. I just uh, wanted to see if you'd take that bait and go. Hmm, maybe they will win. So, I mean, Vanderbilt surprised me before, but it ain't gonna be this week. Yep. Yeah, but we so, got K State coming to visit the uh, the Longhorns in Austin. Yeah, uh, K State. You know they're they're in the top uh, top twenty five or 20. yeah, they're number, they're number twenty. Coming off that big upset of Oklahoma, uh, mm-hmm. and rightfully so. Um, I think that, you know then they they only have two losses on the season. They had a bit of a slip up against Oklahoma State, which is kind of a bad loss. But then their only other loss is to undefeated Baylor. So <laughs> you know they. And they only lost to Oklahoma State by 13 points. So they get a few plays right in that game. And then they're looking – and then they still, you know, lose to Baylor. They're still looking really good. So they're going to go uh, – they're going to be in Austin this weekend. Uh, 2.30 kickoff. Uh, yeah, I'm going to go with the Wildcats because uh, they're they're playing really good defense right now. Um, their quarterback, uh, Skylar Thompson, is – uh, he could run all over. He he reminds me a lot of, and I can never remember his last name was Klein, but I can never remember his first name. Uh, the guy who back in I think it was 2000, uh, 2011, 2000, no, it was 2012 when it was him, Johnny Manziel, and Manti Teo at the Heisman ceremony, and it should have been like oh, Oregon. Yeah, and, yeah. It should have been Oregon and Kansas, Oregon and Kansas State in the national championship that year, but they were both. Uh, undefeated with one to go, and then that was the night that uh, that Baylor beat the dog snot out of K State because uh, they were in Waco and Baylor just ran all over them. Uh, right. And they ended up playing in the sh- uh, in the Fiesta Bowl, and Oregon ran all over K State uh, after they lost to Stanford. But yeah, I'm gonna go with I'm gonna go with the Wildcats. Uh, the Longhorns are not um, they're not back like all of their players oh. think they are. Same. Oh, and, and right, and, and you mentioned that they're at home, which honestly, to me, doesn't matter here. Um, Texas's most crushing losses this year have been at home. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, with you, uh, 
excuse me, not, I apologize. Some of their, some of their more underwhelming defensive performances have been at home. We look at the, they gave up 48 points to Kansas um, as a litmus test. Uh, Kansas state only let Kansas put up 10. So, yeah. um, and that was back to back weeks. So we're not, we're talking about a very similar Kansas team here. Um, yeah. I mean, everything says that you should go with K state here. For some reason, I'm going to pick the Longhorns because I, I don't know. I, I get the feeling that K state is, is riding on a high right now and they they may i don't want to say they're going to overlook texas but i, I don't know that they're going to be fully prepared um it's gonna be a close one for sure but i think i'll take texas by a field goal yeah yeah i'm, I'm gonna go with the wildcats probably by by about a touchdown um but yeah they um yeah give me the wildcats they wear purple so i'm gonna go with them <laughs> <laughs> well we know what that does good lord yeah, that's why the title of our video last week was "Purple People Eaters." I noticed that. That was a really nice touch. I'm glad you did that. Do you know where that's from? What? Do you get that reference? Do you know what that's from? Uh, uh no. <laughs> I recognize it, but I don't. I couldn't. I couldn't the, specify uh, it. The Minnesota Vikings, way back in the '70s, had a really, really good defense, and they were purple, so they called them the Purple People Eaters. Ah, okay, that makes yeah. sense. I knew I recognized that. <laughs> For something in football, but it just wasn't. It was just, it was escaping me. I, I also think it's a song, but I don't know if the song came out before the Minnesota Vikings defense were called was called that. Like mm-hmm. I don't know if they were called that's that true. because the song was, real, was out or was they a real chicken or the egg situation. Yeah. So, but I know it from the Minnesota Vikings defense back in the day. Gotcha. So, me yeah, game, sir. Well, I just gave you that one. You give me. You give me one. Didn't I give you? Oh, we, must have, we were speaking at the same time. Yeah. Iowa going in to Wisconsin, 18 at 16. Uh, two Big Ten, uh, two lost teams. Uh, this is going to be a personal game. Yeah. Um, you know, both blue blood Big Ten teams. Um, Wisconsin was hot starting off the year, you know. Uh, they only allowed a combined 29 points in their first six games, and they had four shutouts. And then they got uh, upset by Illinois two weeks ago, and then oh. they went into the they went into the horseshoe at Ohio State and got blown out. Which that that Illinois seen. game was a, it was a real backbreaker because I think if they win that game, the the, the Ohio State game is much closer. Yeah, um, I think I still you know would have figured that uh, that Ohio State game would have been closer um, than it was, but. Yeah, uh, give me the Hawkeyes in this one. I know they're going to be in Camp Randall Stadium, but I just think, I think after getting upset to by Illinois, I think Wisconsin is going to be down. Um, Jonathan Taylor can't really get anything going, so yeah, give me the Hawkeyes. Uh, yeah, be you know, low yeah. scoring, scrappy game. This the game between these two teams always is. Uh, it's going to be yeah, a fun really game. Um, this is probably going to be my recliner game of the week because just it's going to be one of those classic Big Ten games. Yeah. So yeah, yeah, you're you're looking at about a thirteen to seven, thirteen to eight affair, something along those lines. Mm-hmm. Um, I uh, I also like the Hawkeyes. I think Iowa gets it done. I think the real question for Wisconsin fans is 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 this team going to continue to skid, or are we going? Is there going to sort of be something that changes here? Because it's it's hard to rebound off of the the big loss uh, uh, going into at. at 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 Ohio State, um, and then to just turn right around, and then suddenly you have a number eighteen Hawkeyes team that's ready for blood. So, um, yeah, I, I like I like Iowa here, um, but I agree with you. I think it's going to be very low scoring. Yeah, uh, like I said, classic blue blood big Big Ten game. Um, but yeah, give me the Hawkeyes, um, big time. Even though they're going to be in Camp Randall. Um, I uh, I'm gonna go with the Hawkeyes. Handle. Yeah, Camp Randall Stadium. So, but yeah, I did not know that was the name of the stadium. Yeah, Camp Randall. They uh, I like it when they do their their jump around thing. So. Yeah. Oh, that's the best. I oh, love it's that. So good, dude. Especially if the crowd is singing and they're all in unison. It's. I'm telling you. Yeah, it's really really good. They're all dressed in red and white, so they just look like they're all staff at uh, at Steak and Shake. <laughs> you know? Yeah. So <laughs> it's just a big, just a big Steak and Shake. So, 
Uh, yeah. the, Baylor, the Baylor Bears uh, rolled, uh, continuing to find ways to win against a very close, scrappy game against West Virginia last week. 8-0. Um, mm-hmm. Currently leading, currently has the best record in the Big 12, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, uh, they're, yeah, they're number one in the Big 12 right now. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So, yeah, this um, looking forward to this game. Um, TCU plays well at home. Um, but uh, what, do, what are you thinking? What are you seeing here? Uh. Yeah, TCU plays well at home. It's uh, it, it's hard to win sometimes in Fort Worth and Amon G. Carter Stadium. Um, TCU is coming off a big win against Texas, big upset win against Texas. Um, though the uniforms they wore were obviously really nice. Um, yes. And and you know Baylor's coming off of a coming off of a close one to. Uh, oh, I'm sorry. TCU most recently lost to Oklahoma State by a touchdown. I'm sorry. Yes, yes. But but two weeks ago they had the the upset win over Texas, uh, and then they they come back and they they lose against Oklahoma State. Uh, in they were in Stillwater. Um, you know this is going to be at home. Uh, 11 11 a.m. kickoff uh, in Amon G. Carter for the Frogs. Uh, but I'm going to go with the Bears here. They're just finding ways to win. Um, they you know. They they keep find like I said like we both said they find ways to win they they uh, they beat a West Virginia team that a lot of people had pegged to come in to Waco and just run them off the table um, so uh, you know you look at this game and part of them might think they might look, overlook TCU a little bit going into next week against Oklahoma mm-hmm. especially a night game especially a night game against Oklahoma uh, but I, I'm still gonna take the Bears in this one. Uh, just because, you know, when they go to play Oklahoma, I think that's going to be kind of the de facto Big 12 championship. Um, or they might have to yeah. play, Baylor and Oklahoma might have to play each other twice, depending on who wins that game. Um, right. So, but yeah, I'm going to go with the Bears. Uh, I also like the Bears here again. I mean, I just think that they're the, what they've proven to me so far, especially because obviously they've had some close wins, but they've also had some pretty big wins. Um, they're a team that can kind of, I think, I don't want to say they're a complete team because I think there's still a lot of questions with them being so young, um, but they seem like a team that plays well together, a team that sort of plays for each other. Um, so I like this team. I think that they go into TCU and uh, I think they get up early and I think they hold TCU off. Uh, but let's just hope that can happen because if they lose this game, it's going to be very tough to go into Oklahoma and in Norman and win. Um, yeah. So we'll see what happens, but I'm taking Baylor in this one. Yeah, I'm also taking Baylor. Uh, in a rivalry game formerly known as the Holy War because these are both private um, Christian institutions, institutions. Uh, but now it's called the Revivalry, which is a play on words, <laughs> between revive and rivalry, which I like a lot. I'm a big fan of that. Also, you cut out when you said that, but uh, you said the Holy War, correct? For the Holy War in here. The Holy War, yeah. So Sh- shares a name with the um, shares a name with the well, not anymore, but used to share a name with the uh, Utah versus BYU rivalry. That one mm-hmm. is also known as the Holy War. And now it's the rivalry. The rivalry, which is, I'm in, I'm into I like it. a lot. Yeah, I like that a lot better. Very nice. I'm into that. So, and uh, hopefully your. Uh, your stepfather continues to be happy with his his alma mater. Hopefully so. Told him about the show, by the way. I don't know if he's going to tune in or not, but I told him about it, so he knows he exists now. <laughs> yeah. So. But yeah, you want to tell me about the next one, Daryl? I told you like the last three, dude. Your turn. Yeah. So uh, yeah, uh, Mizzou going to number six Georgia. Uh, Mizzou was kind of hot. Uh, looking like they could have a chance to win the East earlier this what, year. What Mizzou are we going to get this week? I think that's the real question we've got to ask here. Yeah. Um, game in Athens. Um, mm. I don't know. It, depending on which Mizzou team shows up, this could be very interesting, or this could be a blowout on Georgia's side. Um, but uh. I'm going to pick the Bulldogs in this one. They're coming They're coming off a victory against, you know, arguably their biggest rival in Florida. And... They're just gonna, yeah. they're at home. It's a uh, it's an afternoon. Uh, no, six at, six p.m. kickoff. Yeah, give me Georgia at home between the hedges. Yeah, the next thing the next thing uh, that Georgia's really thinking about is Auburn uh, having to go play at Auburn, and that, that again probably at 
at that point will be the best defense that Jake Fromm plays all year. And in fact, probably is going to be, period, the best uh, defense that Jake Fromm plays all year, barring whoever they they may play in the SEC championship if they make it. Um, so I think they're really focused on Auburn right now. Um, they could potentially overlook this Mizzou team, but I don't know. I just don't see it. I think Georgia is just too much. I think their defense is too, is too good. Um, so, yeah, I like Georgia in this one as well. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that one's – that one's pretty cut and dry to me. Um, mm. like, and if you look at this Georgia schedule, by the way, I think that you know, for my Aggies, just as an aside, real quick, I think it looks. I think the A and M game um, is going to be pretty tough for them, especially after that road game against Auburn. Mm-hmm. Um, so mm-hmm. we'll see what happens there. But hopefully, my Aggies can catch them whenever they're a little t- when they're a little tuckered out. Yeah, a little tired, a little beat up, and playing mm-hmm. uh, in what is known as the the Deep South's oldest rivalry. You know, Auburn and Georgia always hit each other hard. So yeah, absolutely. Um, so that'll be a fun one. But yeah, I think I, th- I think Mizzou can't get it done. Do the Aggies play this week? I haven't seen them on here. Mm, I think they have a bye week. So they went bye week, play a game against UTSA, and then bye week. <laughs> oh no, no no no! They're going to South Carolina then. Oh uh, well, no. Appalachian State plays South Carolina this week. I don't know where they're going. Then I'm a terrible fan. Moving on. <laughs> yeah. Um, we can look that up in a second. I will find yeah, out. We're going to get into our bottom. Yeah. We're going to get into our bottom of the barrel game this week. We got Western Kentucky at Arkansas. Um, yeah. Uh, shout out to my classmate, Sheldon Lee, who is uh, now hey. a, uh, a member of Arkansas's um, like social media, like media team. Very um, nice. So he's going to be following all their sports around. Uh, so you got the two and seven, the two and seven Razorbacks at home against the Western Kentucky Hilltoppers. Yeah, the Hilltoppers. It's it's a great, um, it's a great mascot name, and their their actual mascot is like a big red blob that dances around. Um, and they wear <laughs> they wear it. they wear a silver chrome helmet sometimes. Um, so I'm gonna go with the Hilltoppers because Arkansas is not that good this year. <laughs> uh, you know they got this is a two and a half point line. Vegas is saying this is gonna be a close one. Uh, I th- I kind of agree. I think it is gonna be a close one. It might be as it might sneakily be one of the most interesting um, or closest bottom of the barrel games we've had all year. Um, you're taking Western Kentucky. I'm gonna go ahead and take Arkansas to oppose you. Um, and because I have a lot of Arkansas friend uh, friends that. Are, Arkansas fans that are friends and family. So mm-hmm. I'm going to take Arkansas here. Uh, but, yeah, it should be a, a scrappy, ugly game that uh, Arkansas makes themselves look bad several times but somehow wins. So that's mm-hmm. what I'm expecting. Yeah. So. Oh. You're ready to end. Uh, is everyone ready to end Spencer's misery and get to this big bad game? <sighs> uh, oh, Okay. We we have arrived at the moment where I have to finally talk about this damn game. I have not. Want, I, I want to let y'all know that if 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 this happens, if if Alabama somehow wins this game in the same thirty day stretch as the Astros blew the World Series, um, Spencer will not be in a good place. <laughs> <laughs> he, he will. We will need to come. Like I'll have to come. Like find him and and like bring him some ice cream and. You're just gonna find me standing cool. under a rain cloud. Like that Vegeta meme you keep sending me. You're gonna <laughs> Vegeta just looking up at the clouds all dramatically brooding. But it's gonna be sunshine all around me, but it's just gonna be raining on me and I'm just gonna be standing there. You're gonna be like the UCF fans in two thousand seven. Yeah. Uh devastated. Yeah, you uh you can't see the tears if it's raining. <laughs> That's right. That's exactly right. So who you got, my man? All right. Okay. The curse of number two gonna wake up this week. Uh, well, Alabama's number two, obviously. Um, what I'm saying they may not be because again, we have the playoff. We have the playoff rankings coming out tomorrow, so this one versus two matchup could change. Um, it you know they could put Ohio State above LSU. They could move Alabama back to number one. You don't know what's gonna happen. But right now, this game is number one versus number two. It has not been. Alabama LSU has not been number one, number two since 2011, which they called it the game of the century game. 
Back then, LSU was number one. Alabama was number two. They played in Tuscaloosa. The game went into overtime, tied six to six. There was like Alabama missed like five field goals in that game because, of course, they did because they can't recruit kickers. Um, and the the final score of that game was nine to six. Uh, and I still remember Vern Lundquist's call when Brad Wing made the field goal or whoever the kicker was back then made the field goal. He said LSU remains undefeated. Um, and then you go you go further into that you go further into that season. And um, it should have been LSU and Oklahoma State in the national championship, but coming up on the you know last game of the season, Oklahoma State played Iowa State in Ames, and Iowa State pulled the upset. So you get to, that was back when we had the BCS system. So they put LSU versus Alabama in the national championship at the Superdome in New Orleans, and that kicked off an an eight and zero streak of Alabama beating LSU. So. Yeah, so they uh, they you know cheated my Tigers a little bit. We ended up losing that national championship twenty one to nothing. But it was a it was a weird score. Like uh, Alabama kicked five field goals um, and then scored a touchdown on a long run. But um, at least your at least your team has a, a national championship this century. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, I mean we won in two thousand three and we won in two thousand seven. Um, this year, you look at you you look at LSU stats. We've got uh, we've got the top the the top passer in the SEC. I think it's the it might be all of college football, but I want to don't quote me on this because I just saw it. But we've got one of the top passers in college football. We've got two of the top receivers in college football. We've got um, we've got a good defense. You know, we got Derek Stingley, who's just a freshman, who's going to be very good going forward. Um, we've got a good offensive line. We're running the ball very well. We're running the ball more than we have been earlier in the season. Um, and our offense just looks good. You know, obviously we had uh, a, a typical SEC game against against Auburn, but Auburn's defense is also very good. Um, right. so and then you look at Alabama, and you know they're out. They're typically Alabama, right? They've been they've been beating people big. Um. You know, we can get into the whole conversation about their schedule, and Alabama fans don't really, don't really like it when you talk about their schedule. They're like, "Oh, we can't help who we play." These schedules were made way in advance, and part of me agrees with that. But they only have one top twenty-five win, and that was when they played number twenty-four Texas A&M. And everybody else, you look at their schedule, they beat Duke, and then New Mexico State, South Carolina, Southern Southern Mississippi, and then Ole Miss, Tennessee, and Arkansas. So you look at their schedule. And it's kind of weak, but they have, they always, they get the best recruits. They've got one of the best quarterbacks in the country into a Tagovailoa. They've got arguably these, I don't, I'm not going to say who's number one, who's number two, but these are the two best wide receiver cores in the country. Um, and especially in the SEC. Um, it, this game's going to be big. And, you know, LSU and Alabama always knock the snot out of each other. It's going to be scrappy. It's going to be hard hitting. But I think... This one is going to be a shootout. This isn't going to be a 2011 nine to six. This isn't going to be like last year, like it was, like a like a 29 to nothing win for Alabama. Um, this is going to be a shootout. So this is going to be who can play a game of keep up. Um, 2:30 kickoff in Tuscaloosa. Game day will be in Tuscaloosa that morning. Um, I it 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 hurts to say this, but I'm going to. I want LSU to win, but I'm going to pick oh. Alabama to win this game. Oh, give me just a score. Be- at 45 to 38. Just because Excellent. just because Alabama has won the past eight games against LSU, and I am more confident this year than I have been about, um, about any year I have been. But Nick Saban's obviously like the best coach in college football history. And it, they find a way to win games. They don't get upset that much. And this wouldn't be an upset because these are obviously two of the best teams in the country. And it, I'm an LSU fan. I've said it. You know it. And everybody knows that I dislike Alabama. But I'm going to pick Alabama to win this game because it, I because of past evidence. It's it's in Tuscaloosa. Um, but I do think this game will be decided. Whether or not um, 
to a Tagovailoa plays. If Tua plays, it improves Alabama's chances. If he doesn't play, it improves LSU's chances. But I'm still going to pick Alabama to win this game. Interesting. Well, I'll tell you what, man. Um, this is what there, – there are two big stats, as I was looking at this, that, that stick out to me. Um, the first stat is that the uh, – is that how equal things pretty much are across the board. Both teams are allowing uh, – both teams are scoring about 47 points a game. Both teams are allowing about uh, 17 points a game. Uh, both teams are putting up pretty similar yardage in both ways. Um, the thing that sticks out to me, interestingly here, is that yards allowed for LSU – Average per game is two, about 217. Alabama's is 180. Conversely, rushing yards allowed for LSU is under 100. It's 97.9. And then LSU, I mean, and then uh, Alabama is 127, almost 130 there. Mm-hmm. So you're looking at two top tier defenses. Um, Alabama is going to allow more on the ground. LSU's defense is going to allow more through the air. So I think you're going to see. Some interesting dynamics. Um, I think that this probably favors, just because of how these defenses are performing, I think it slightly favors our defense against Joe Burrow. Um, so I think you're going to see a game here that is lower scoring. I think you're going to see very similar to like the Auburn game, um, where it's maybe like a 24-17, 24-20, 23-20 affair, something along those lines. Um, so that's the neighborhood I'm thinking. I think this is going to be a more defensive game than we than we think, unless things get wacky um, maybe in the fourth quarter or in an overtime. Uh, mm-hmm. The second stat that sticks out to me, um, LSU's played eight games this year. Um, Joe Burrow's QBR each game has been fantastic. But can you guess which game his QBR was lowest in? If you just want to guess a team. Auburn, probably. Oh, Auburn was one of his – it was one of his lower, but his lowest QBR all year was against Utah State. Really? Really. Um, outside of that, everything he has is 82 – he had 182 against Auburn and everything else was 90 and up. Um, he was bored, and that's why he didn't play so well at Utah State. He's a big-game quarterback. Um, he steps up in the, in the moment, and I think that if his defense will give him a chance, depending on obviously two and everything, how that goes – I think if his defense gives him a chance, um, this is going to be a very close game. I actually, uh, I'm going to pick LSU here, believe it or not. So, uh, but I'm going LSU, and I'm going uh, 27-23. Okay, um, I mean there that is. makes me happy that you picked them, and like the with you know running the risk of being called a homer and being called you know a biased fan, you know, and like I've made it known, and anybody who knows me and who's known me for a while knows that when it comes to this game, I I'm gonna get on I usually get on Facebook and I talk a bunch of shit and I I go back and forth with people. Um I don't know, Teddy and, and Will are gonna give me a hard time about this one if LSU ends up losing. Um but any but we're, I gonna, a, we're gonna we're gonna clip this moment if we're right. <laughs> we're gonna yeah. put it on Facebook and I'm gonna be like, I told y'all. Yeah, and so and I feel like I've I'm I'm much more even keeled about this game than I have been in uh, in the past. Um, I really, really want LSU to win. I'm going to be cheering for LSU to win, but I t- history tells me that Alabama's going to show up in this big game, yeah. and I still think if LSU, I'm gonna say this: if LSU wins this game. I think Alabama is out of the playoff. I think Alabama does not make the playoff. If Alabama wins this game and goes on to the SEC championship and win, like if LSU wins this game and goes on to win the SEC championship, I think Alabama is out of the playoff, regardless of how the rest of the season turns out. But if Alabama wins this game and goes on to win the SEC championship, I still think LSU has a shot to make the playoff because of their track record because of our a record against top, against top teams this season so again i think, I, I, think I want score. yeah it depends on the score it depends on if it's a close game or not it depends on other factors but i want lsu to win this game i'm telling you that you know i've i've said it up front i'm an lsu fan you all know that but like i said i'm going to pick alabama in this one because i have i have i have eight games of them winning and finding a way to win in close games. So I want LSU to win, but I'm going to pick Alabama because it's the safe bet. I understand. I understand. So, I'm, I'm looking forward to it, man. It's going to be a fun game. Yeah. So do we want yeah. to put a little bow on this by uh, talking about the uniform of the week? 
Yeah, uh, Colorado State uh, this past oh. week wore some, wore some really cool uniforms. Uh, that were they went outside their color scheme a little bit. Their their color scheme is like a like a, a green and gold type thing. Uh, but this week they wore some uh, uniforms based off the Colorado State flag, and they were all white, but they had blue and yellow and red mixed into them, and they looked really really good. I like I like the the way these ram the the way these uniforms looked on the Rams, um, the Colorado State Rams. They looked really yeah, good. Yeah, I, I was. Them. I was a big fan of this. It was really nice. Um, again, like just that that C with the I believe it's a sun in the middle. I don't know. I'm not a Colorado person, um, mm-hmm. but I believe yeah, the, the little C logo on the side of the helmet against the white it just looks very clean. Um, I really yeah. like stuff like this. I wish you could see. I mean, I would love to see any Texas team just sort of have like the Texas flag on the side or some yeah. edited variation of it. Yeah, um, Texas Tech boy, has done just, something like that in the past. That would that that looks. Yeah, really I think good. they have right. Um, but yeah, I like these. Um, they looked really, really good. Um, so, and then A and M had the USA helmets a while back. Yeah, those look good. Um, yeah, I like these. These look good, and obviously, I'll you know the link will be in the description of the video. Um, so, but yeah, Daryl, hope you're you ready. Tell, yeah, you want me to? You want to tell me about something cool outside of college football? Hmm. Let me think about that, actually. Uh, I think I know what you're going to say, so I'm not going to steal what you were going to say. Um, I'm going to guess and say you were going to talk about Jack. I am going to talk about Jack. It. Yeah, you go ahead and say it then while I think of mine. <laughs> uh, my cool thing outside of college football is this is being recorded on Monday, and this upcoming Saturday at the time when all of these games are going on, so we are probably not going to be able to watch much of this LSU game. Fortunately. Um, because me and Daryl are groomsmen and a really good friend of ours. His name is Jack. He's getting married to his fiance Sydney this Saturday, um, and he he has bestowed the honor of being groomsmen uh, on us. Uh, and we got rehearsal dinner this Friday night. Um, and uh, Jack, if you're listening to this, I don't know if you can. Jack, I'm so honored that you asked me to be in your wedding. Absolutely, um, man. Even though you were you were. You were in my wedding, and you were also in Daryl's wedding. Um, that's that's a cool story that I can tell. Um, our me and Daryl, we have two friends named Jack and Will, and we, you know that's been like our core friend group for since the the later part of high school. I know I started hanging out with y'all, you know, later in life, but you know these are my you know Daryl, Jack, and Will is my three best friends in the world, and I would do anything for them. Uh, and, uh, Daryl was my best man in my wedding. I was the best man in Daryl's wedding. And now Will is going to be the best man in Jack's wedding. But Will and Jack were also both in mine and Daryl's weddings when we got married. So it, you know, find some friends that, that you love enough that you want to be, um, that you want to invite to be in your wedding. Uh, so Jack, consistently over the years, cause these were not all back to back. I mean, no, were- they were not. I got married four years ago. Daryl got married almost four years ago. Um, it's coming up on four, right? May it be sure four is. Years. Yeah, it sure um, will, which is crazy. Jack's getting married um, this Saturday. So, Jack, I'm honored. Uh, I love you, man. And it's going to be fun seeing everybody Friday night. We're going to get to play some Smash and some NCAA and eat some good pizza at Luigi's. Um, and we're we'll get to play Luigi's Mansion because uh, it comes out on Friday, I believe, right? Uh no 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 it came out uh came out last Friday actually oh it came out last Friday okay mm-hmm. well, whichever we're gonna get to play it we're gonna go to eat at Luigi's eat some really good some like local pizza uh there in Orange where we're from and then it's gonna be really fun uh I miss I miss all of you and I'm glad we're gonna get to spend all this time together absolutely man that's gonna be awesome um and it's gonna be good cool. to see Trey and Shane too I haven't seen them yeah in a long time. it'd be good to see everybody I think even Nathan's gonna be a, it'll be a full event. Yeah, well, like rehearsal dinner, everybody's gonna be there. But then, like mm-hmm. after that, I think we're all gonna break off into the two sides. Um, and Nathan might come hang out with us, or he might stay with Sydney and and whoever else. Um, it'll be a, it'll be a party one with the other. So yeah, it's gonna be really fun. So thank My you, cool Jack. News. For yeah. oh, absolutely, I'm looking forward to that. Also, how'd you know I was gonna talk boy. about Jack? I just know you. <laughs> yeah. Just like he, he's totally gonna do that. Um, I didn't want to steal it. That's why I asked. Um, my cool thing, uh, I haven't actually seen this yet, but it's a cool thing. Um, Joker crossed 900 million world ride in the box office and is now approaching 1, 1 billion by the end of its run. Mm-hmm. So that's kind of wild for 
Such uh, a good movie, dude. Yeah, yeah. If you haven't had the chance, please go see this movie. A lot of people um, are saying it was better than like um, uh, Heath Ledger's performance, which nobody's gonna ever have... beat Heath. I'm sorry, you're not gonna oh. do it. Well, even even without beating it, I think that he's he's better set for a larger role because this movie is actually about Joker, so there's more yeah. screen time to work with. Yeah, but, but um, like Heath Ledger is the Joker, like and like I, this movie, this you know Joaquin Phoenix plays the Joker in this movie, and. I even though this is supposed to be a, a, a standalone movie, and I'm not going to spoil anything, but Daryl, when you get the chance to go watch this movie, you're going to know what I'm talking about. I really, 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 really want them to continue this universe. Like, I want them. Like, obviously, there's there's a Batman movie in the works. I and if they come to a point where Batman and the Joker meet, I want this Joker to. Be, I want Joaquin Phoenix's Joker to be the Joker. In this upcoming Batman series, they're going to work on because this. See, show- I, I'm interestingly, and I mean, maybe you're right. Maybe that would be cool. But I'm interested. I'm interestingly on the other side of the spectrum, and that I almost kind of like DC being sort of these contained movies because to me they always felt more serious and like self-contained. Yeah, than this wasn't a DC the Marvel movie, movies. The well, this I know, but it was it was based on a DC character. Is what I'm saying. Yeah. Well, like it wasn't even going to be called Joker when they first started. It was just going to be a movie. And then they put Joker on it, and obviously this is the Joker, and they 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 tied it into the the Joker story. But you could almost rebrand this as any other movie, and it would still work. Um, and I feel the same way about like Guardians of the Galaxy. Even though Guardians of the Galaxy is a Marvel property, you could almost have labeled that anything else, and it would still have been a really really good movie. All right. Um, as usual, we have been marred by technical difficulties. Um, so, uh, We're changing the name of the show. It's now called the Game Day Technical Difficulty. The Game Day Technical Difficulty. Yeah. So uh, here's Daryl coming from the bright, crispy audio of my cell phone. So that's right. Enjoy that. Uh, but yeah, thanks for listening, everybody. So we we went off on we went off on several tangents this week. Um, but this is gonna be a fun show, and it's gonna be a fun week of football. So. I cannot wait to listen to this part back. <laughs> recording. Yeah, it, it, this is going to sound really cool. Um, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, I just oh, I your just, mic came back. Hold on. Back. <laughs> cool. Well, we got it fixed. I can. I'll edit all of that out. Okay. For real this time. Thanks. Uh, thanks for dropping in. Bye, everybody. Um, yeah. It's gonna be a fun weekend. Let us know in the comments what you think. Yeah. And uh, uh, I don't know what happened there, but uh, we. Uh, yeah. So. Let us uh, let us know what you think. Let us know how wrong we are, how right we are. Um, uh, we are not going to be able to watch much football because we're going to be very busy on Saturday with wedding stuff. So, no matter what happens with the LSU game, I'm gonna I'm gonna clip whoever was right about the LSU game and post it to Facebook and be like, "See, so and so told y'all." <laughs> yeah. yeah. So. But yeah. Thanks for listening, right, everybody. Be good. Thanks for dropping by. Yes, sir.